Hi there guys, uh, it's me again. This is another video in the getting yourself a job side of things, which is thinking about new technologies and how they're likely to affect the process. Well, there's a whole range of ways, of course. There are some people, fairly small proportion at the moment, who are thinking about video CVs there are relatively few companies that actually engaged in this. Some more avant-garde techno companies, yes, perhaps. But are banks and building societies into that? Probably not really. Are major supermarkets into that? Probably not really. So that is a little bit marginal, but it might be something that you perhaps want to look at. However, there are other things like LinkedIn, most of you, I hope, have probably got yourself a LinkedIn profile and have immersed yourself a little bit in what LinkedIn is, how it works and how you spread the word about yourself and your abilities and opportunities that you are, you are seeking. Certainly, I have had students this past couple of years saying, I don't even need to write a CV. I wrote a really good LinkedIn profile and people have found me and I've actually been offered an interview and got the job. So that's something that's changing. There's also other things. The idea of application forms. Now, these do exist at the moment in a paper form, but they are so easy to produce in a digital form. For example, if you go to try to work for Airbus, which at the moment would be a little difficult because Airbus are shedding thousands of jobs currently the world over and a significant number in France as we speak. But with them, you don't do a CV, you don't do a covering letter, although you can send them if you want. You complete a database. They fire questions at you. You spend most of the day answering those questions and they say, thank you very much. You're now on our database. And we will perhaps be in contact if ever a post comes up that seems to match your qualifications. That doesn't mean you're getting the job. It doesn't mean you're being offered the job. It might mean that you tell them that you would like to be considered for the job. You may or may not be selected for interview, etc. So people are beginning now to use databases and particularly application forms. Effectively, a database is an automated application form. For example, if there were five applicants they thought were particularly good, you could actually compare them side by side by saying field number one in the database. How does each candidate compare? So rather than having uh, large numbers of human resources staff crawl all over the various application forms, or worse still, all over the CVs that have all been written in different order, so it's very, very difficult to actually compare like with like, an application form gives you the advantage that you can see each person uh, and their responses to each question. If you automate it and you put it on a database, that makes it possible for the employer simply to get the software to do the piece of work and to compare and contrast. Well, what does this mean to you? Well, there is a significant difference. On your own CV, it is your CV. There is no law, there is no regulation in France or anywhere else that I know of that says a CV must have this particular information set. You, because it's your CV, you can choose what you want to put on your CV and you want to leave off your CV. Now, I've spoken about that elsewhere, where I've been talking specifically about CVs in another series of videos that you will find very close to this one. So what's the difference with an application form? Well, an application form is the company determining 
these are the things that we require that each and every student or applicant gives us. They must give us this information and they must give it to us in this order so that we can compare like with like, candidate with candidate very easily. Quite often the way that's phrased on an application, sorry, on a, uh, an invitation uh, to a, uh, from a job offer is please complete our application form. Feel free to send us your CV and covering letter, but you must fully complete our application form. For the obvious reason that that's what they're going to start with. Maybe if you're selected for interview, they might have a good look at your CV and covering letter. But to produce the shortlist, mostly an automated piece of software is going to compare the data sets that have been inputted. Or if it's a hard copy version of an application form, a member of the human resources is going to lay things side by side and compare and contrast them and select from them. So what does that mean to you? Well, when you get an application form, you must complete it. If you don't complete things and you leave data out, you're unlikely to be selected for interview. The implication is you are leaving this out for a good reason, that obviously you don't look good in response to this particular question. And then where you are asked for information, you have to give that information and it must be honest and correct. Otherwise, if you are off the post, perhaps after interview, and they subsequently find out that you have lied on the application form, they have the right, without any concern at all, effectively to fire you because you have misrepresented yourself to an interviewer, to a company, and for them that means you have got the job under false pretenses and they will have no compunction, no reservations about actually saying, I'm sorry, we found that out, there's the door, please go through it. What else can we say about application forms? Yes, they must be complete. Yes, they must be accurate. But when it comes to application forms, uh, especially in hard copy, Clearly, something is printed. Now, if it's printed and they leave you a little box to complete with just a couple of lines, you know they just want some basic, short information. If, on the other hand, they offer you a box that is half a page of A4, they are anticipating that you have some detail. You have something really interesting to say. So if they say, Give us some information about three major successes in your academic or professional life. They don't want one. They want three. They want them in sufficient detail to fill half a page. They've left you half a page because they think they will need half a page to be convinced. So if you're completing an application form and you're writing a couple of lines and leaving a whole load of white space, forget it. You are very, very unlikely to be selected for interview on the basis that you are not living up to their expectations. So the other thing about the application form is you need to follow the cues, the clues that are there. And when they show you the amount of space that they are leaving you, take advantage of that space because they expect you to. And if you can't, they're wondering whether you have that detail, whether you have that depth, whether you have understood what they are going fishing for, why you haven't provided what they wanted. 
So application forms are very important. The problem is sometimes when you see these application forms in the form of a database, you get a line to type text in and you don't know how big the box is. Perhaps in some cases it says 500 digits uh, or uh, 5,000, etc. But whatever it says, that is their expectation. Take the cue, read the clues and react accordingly. OK, so essentially when you're dealing with things online, I know it's new, but the same attention to detail and depth applies in the digital realm as it does in the hard copy realm, in the CV, the covering letter and the hard copy application form. So don't be frightened that it's a brave new world out there and we're going to get rid of paper very quickly. That really isn't going to happen. If I go back to something I said earlier in this section that you will find in a number of uh, my articles on this particular playlist about CVs, covering letters and getting a job. The point is the detail that the company gives you. Years ago, companies used to give a short job offer and just expect you to apply making things up. Now they're giving you a lot of detail of the job that you're going to have to do, the responsibilities that you're going to have, the type of experience and qualifications that the best candidate, the most impressive candidate must have to be able to expect to be selected for interview and subsequently, hopefully, appointed. You need always, whether you're doing anything digitally or whether you're doing it in the um, analog world, you need always to look at what has been sent to you because in a famous game show in the UK in the 1980s, 1990s, the clues are there, okay? You fail to read those clues and it's going to be difficult for you, okay? So digitally, things do make a difference, but not as much as you might think. Companies are having some difficulties proving, for example, that going out on social networks really works for them. It costs an awful lot of money to have a social network's presence, to update it in how many cultural or um, linguistic language contexts. It costs a lot of money and they're not always prepared to pay that. And they're not always sure when they do make an investment, whether it is paying off. So although a lot of people are going towards the digital, for the moment, a lot of others are resisting that temptation. You are, as we say, on the cusp between the two. You have to, with your legs, like the Colossus of Rhodes on either side of those uh, harbour walls, you've got to stretch both ways to be able to apply in the hard copy world and the digital world. But the underlying logic behind that, frankly, is not that different. Thank you.